Hello everyone, it's Magda the Story Spider and today I have a story that's I guess more for grown-ups than for little kids. And it's for my friends Connor and Kel. Connor's birthday was last month and so I promised him that I would get him this story as soon as I could. It's a Korean tale called The Tiger's Whisker. There once was a boy and a girl who lived right next door to each other in their village. They grew up together. They became best friends. They did everything together. Schoolwork, playing. They even took music lessons together. She her flute, him a drum. And the more that their friendship grew and the more they grew as people, the more their music became masterpieces. When it came time to talk about love and who people were going to marry when they grew up, well, it kind of made sense for them to set up a house together. About a year and a half after they were married, the man decided that he needed to go to war. The woman supported him in this decision of his, helped him pack his bag, helped him prepare for the journey. And after he left, she focused on her music and she focused on building a house for them together. When he returned, he was a completely different person. He even changed his name to reflect that. He didn't talk much. He ate even less. He ignored his drum completely. It was like he wanted to sit in the dark and let this secret that he had eat him from inside out. It was so strange. This is the first time they had ha ever had a secret that they didn't both share. And she tried to be patient. She tried to talk to him, tried to give him space for him to talk to her. But nothing seemed to change. So she went along with her life and... One day she went to the market and she heard some people talking about the war. They were sharing stories and she heard her husband's old name mentioned multiple times. And so she went to the group and asked them what they were talking about. They told her what he could not. Things he had seen. Things he had done. She was furious. She could not believe that these very essential things had been kept from her. And she went back home. She threw those accusations in his face. He couldn't do anything but admit it. All of it was true. He, and he wanted to tell her, but he didn't know how. And so they yelled and they argued and they screamed. And then what came next was worse because it was the silence. It was as if they lived together, but completely alone. She didn't know what to do. She knew they needed help. And so she did the only thing that she could think of, which was plan a trip to the wise woman who lived next to the jungle. No one ever went to that house without something very desperate to ask. Because that dark woman, she talked about things that you just didn't discuss in mixed company. And everyone was just a little bit afraid of her. So the young woman, whose name was Yum Oak, went to the wise woman at the edge of the jungle. And she knocked on her door. The wise woman answered it, holding a glass of water and some warm bread. She brought Young Oak into her home and she shared water with her. And she shared the bread. And as she ate next to the warm fire, Young Oak told her her story. She told her of her husband as them as children growing up together. They told she told of her music and his music and how they used to play together. Told of her marriage and the war and the silence. The old woman nodded, sagely listening, and desperately Young Oak looked at her and begged for some sort of potion, talisman, anything to make it like it was. The old woman smiled and said no one could turn back time, but she might be able to help. She needed an ingredient, though, 
and this ingredient was a tiger's whisker. That was impossible. I mean, hunting parties had gone out to the jungle looking for bands of tigers, and most of them had not returned. And if they did, they returned desperately injured and maimed. And how was she, a one woman, to find a tiger's whisker? So she left discontented. But that night, she dreamed of sharp claws and teeth, orange and black stripes. And the next morning, when she got up, she had an idea. She prepared a bowl of rice with this brown, thick meat sauce on top. She took it out to the jungle to a cave where it was said that tigers lived. She placed it in front of the door of the cave and left. The next day, she brought a new bowl of rice with that creamy brown meat sauce on top. And she replaced the empty bowl with the new one. Every day she did this for a month. And every day her sacrifice was taken. That bowl was licked clean. So, after a month of that, she began to stay, just on the edge of the jungle, watching as the tiger would come out of the cave, sniff the bowl, sniff the air, kind of look her direction, but never hurt her, never approach, just take the rice and take the sacrifice. After about a month of watching, the woman began to step closer, foot by foot, until she would sit right next to the bowl. It had been another month. And the tiger was getting quite used to this woman watching it eat. And so it would sniff her a little bit, but never hurt her, never attack. It had been two months. And getting up her courage, she reached out one morning and touched the tiger. She ran her hand along its flank. She touched its head and its ear. It did not resist. And after sitting closely and touching the tiger for about a week, she asked the question that she had been wanting to ask for two months, almost three. Could she have one of its whiskers? The tiger didn't resist, so she unrolled a knife from her apron and quickly cut a whisker from the tiger's face. She took the whisker back to the old woman, knocked frantically on the door, and the old woman met her with a candle and a blanket. She sat young oak next to the fire and listened to the story of how she had fed the tiger and the tiger had given her the whisker. The old woman just stared at the whisker in her hand and nodded sagely listening and then she did something unusual she threw the whisker into the fire where it was completely burned up young oak was astounded how could she have done that they needed that the woman had promised to help some sort of talisman or potion to make things better the old woman just shook her head my child, she said, I cannot do this thing for you. You are the only one who can. Now tell me, is your husband fiercer than a tiger? Does he have claws sharper than the black striped uh, cat? Go home. You know what you must do. Young Oak left discontented. And on the way home though, she began to think about her husband and think about the tiger. And she did know what she had to do. She got to their house and she saw him through the window sitting there like a beast in a dark cave. And her first instinct was to run, but instead, she opened the door. Thank you for listening.